5.1 Up A uh, Enough Tough Horse Or Bought Brought Caught Daughter Thought Phone Oh Although Car Ah Laugh Boot Ooh Through 5.2 1. I bought some steak, but it was very tough. 2. Although it was dark, we walked through the tunnel. 3. I thought I'd brought enough money with me. 4. I laughed when my daughter caught the ball. 5.3 Tip number one. Eat breakfast sitting down. Most people stay in bed until the last minute and then have a coffee and a piece of toast standing up. This is really bad for you because it means that you start the day in a hurry. Your body and mind are already moving too fast. So do yourself a favor. Get up ten minutes earlier every day and have breakfast. Nice and slowly. Tip number two. Forget the gym and do yoga instead. Many people go to the gym after work to do exercise because they think that this relaxes them, but it doesn't. Believe me. I really think that a gym is a very stressful place. Exercising hard, for example doing aerobics, makes your heart beat more quickly, so it doesn't relax your body at all. In fact, it does the opposite. So forget the gym and try doing yoga. Yoga will not only help you to get fit, but it will also slow your body down and help you to think more clearly. Tip number three. Go for a long walk. Walking is the most traditional form of exercise, but many people have just forgotten how to do it. These days, we all just get into our cars. The great thing about walking is that you can't walk very fast, so walking actually slows you down. And when we walk, we look around us at the birds, the trees, the shops, other people. It reminds us of the world we live in, and it helps us to stop and think and relax. Tip number four. Spend ten minutes each day in silence. Meditation isn't new. People have been doing it for thousands of years, and now it is becoming really popular again. In the United States now, you can find meditation rooms in companies, schools, airports, and even hospitals. Meditation is a fantastic way to teach your mind to slow down and to think more clearly. And spending time in silence every day will also benefit your general health. And finally, tip number five. Have a bath, not a shower. Having a shower is very quick and convenient, but it is another part of our fast-living culture. When you come home from work, instead of having a shower, have a bath and spend half an hour there. A bath is one of the most relaxing things you can do, and it will really help to slow you down at the end of a hard day. 5.4 Government Movement Organization Relaxation Discussion Reaction Proposal Survival Happiness Madness Possibility Similarity 5.5. 1. Shall we go for a walk in the park? 2. He's a doctor at the local hospital. 
Three. Is there a bookshop in the centre of town? Four. I'd like a ticket for the match on Thursday, please. Five. They have a big house in the country. Six. We can have a break at the end of this exercise. Five point six. The shop. The address. The owner. The son. The engineer. The world. Five point seven. One. That man over there is very wealthy. Two. June is the sixth month of the year. Three. There are three things you have to remember. Four. I threw it away the other day. Five. We have maths in the third term. Six. The athletics track is through that gate. Five point eight. One. The body polish. So, what did you think? Oh, it was just horrible, horrible. Fruits for eating, not for putting on your body. It was hot and sticky and incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> And I felt so stupid. I'd never have that again. I give it zero out of ten. Sticky? It was fruit, for goodness' sake. I thought it was wonderful. It smelled so good, and it was incredibly relaxing. I mean, how could anybody not like it? Oh, and the head massage was divine. That was one of my favourite spa treatments ever. Ten out of ten. Okay. So, now the facial. Hmm. How long is this one? One hour forty minutes. Oh, you're joking! That's too long. Too long? It'll be heaven. See you later. Huh. Five point nine. Two. The facial. Oh, that was so boring. It went on forever. Oh, I loved it. Well, I must admit my face feels different, much smoother. But I'm not sure I really want a smooth face, and it was nearly two hours, and she used about twelve different creams and things. It normally only takes me a minute to wash my face, and I just use soap and water. The therapist said I ought to buy five different products. Well, I enjoyed every second. My skin feels great, really healthy. I give it nine out of ten. Hmm, I give it four. Your problem was that you were hungry, so you couldn't relax. We could have a fruit juice before the last treatment. A fruit juice? Oh, okay then. If you really want one. Five point ten. Three. The foot treatment. Wow. Don't tell me you liked it. <laughs> it was wonderful. I must say your feet look, well, better. Clean anyway. <laughs> Well, I've never liked my feet much, to be honest, but now they look great. That was definitely worth the time and money. Nine out of ten. What do you think? Yes, it was great. A real luxury, and I loved the colour they painted my nails. I agree. Nine out of ten. You see, I knew you'd love. Five point eleven. One. It was just horrible. Horrible. Fruits for eating, not for putting on your body. It was hot and sticky and incredibly uncomfortable. Two. The head massage was divine. That was one of my favourite spa treatments ever. Three. I must admit my face feels different, much smoother, but I'm not sure I really want a smooth face. Four. 
It normally only takes me a minute to wash my face, and I just use soap and water. Five. What did you think? Yes, it was great, a real luxury, and I love the colour they painted my nails. Five point twelve. Song. Skater boy. Was a girl, cannot make it any more obvious. He was a punk, she did ballet. What more can I say? He wanted her, she never tell. Secretly, she wanted him as well. But all of her friends stuck up their nose. They had a problem with his baggy clothes. He was a skater boy, she said, See you later, boy. He wasn't good enough for her. She had a pretty face, but her head was up in space. She needed to come back down to work. Five years from now, she sits at home, feeding the baby. She's all alone. She turns on TV, guess who she sees? Skate up by rocking up MTV. She calls up her friends, they already know. And they've all got tickets to see the show. She tags along, but stands in the crowd, looks up at the man that she turned down. He was a skater boy, she says, see you later, boy. He wasn't good enough for her. Now he's a superstar, slamming on his guitar. Does your pretty face see what he's worth? He was a skater boy, she says, see you later, boy. He wasn't good enough for her. Now he's a superstar, slamming on Five point thirteen. One. Apply. Two. Contract. Three. Employee. Four. Experience. Five. Overtime. Six. Permanent. Seven. Qualifications. Eight. Resign. Nine. Retire. Ten. Temporary. Five point fourteen. Week one. When I got to the studio on the first day, I was really nervous. I met my teachers, Adam and Sally, and they were very nice to me, but I could see that they thought it was going to be impossible to teach me to be a reporter in just a month. 
The problem with Jessica at the beginning was that she was too shy and too nice. Political reporters need to be hard, almost aggressive sometimes, and I've never met anyone less aggressive than Jessica. And also, she knew nothing about politics. She knew who the prime minister was, but not much else. I spent the first week watching lots of political interviews on TV, and Adam and Sally taught me how to speak more clearly and more confidently. In the evenings, they made me read the political sections of all the newspapers. It was very boring. At the end of the week, I was exhausted. Five point fifteen. Week two. Adam and Sally said I had to change my image for TV. So I had my hair cut and coloured, and I got new, smarter clothes. I must say I liked my new look. I spent the week learning how to interview someone in front of a camera. Then came Jessica's first big challenge. The prime minister was arriving home after a visit to the USA. She had to wait outside Number Ten Downing Street with the other journalists and try to ask him a question. It was a disaster. I was so nervous. I was shaking. There were a lot of other journalists pushing and shouting. They didn't let me get near the prime minister. I tried to ask my question, but he didn't hear me. I felt really stupid. Five point sixteen, week three. Jessica was finally making some progress. She was more relaxed. This week, she had to interview a politician from the Conservative Party in the studio. In the beginning, it was fine, but then I made a stupid mistake. So, could you tell us what the Labour Party are going to do about the? Oh, sorry, I, I mean the Conservative Party.、Uh, what they're going to do about the compromises that they were making on the? I said the Labour Party instead of the Conservative Party, and after that, I was really nervous again. We all make mistakes sometimes. Jessica just has to learn to carry on and not lose her confidence. Five point seventeen, week four. I spent the last week preparing for the test. It was going to be a live interview with the Minister of Education. There would be three professional reporters and me, all asking him questions. I'd done lots of research, so although I was nervous, I felt well prepared. Minister, many people think that the real reason why there aren't enough teachers is because their salaries are so low. Are you proposing to increase teachers' salaries? Well, let's not forget that salaries are much higher today than they were under the previous government. Yes, but you haven't answered my question. Are you going to increase them? Well, we're planning to spend a lot more money on education in the next two years. Is that a yes or a no? There are no immediate plans to increase teachers' salaries. So it's a no then. Thank you, Minister. When it was all over, came the worst part. I had to wait while the judges decided which of us they thought wasn't a professional reporter. The judges gave their verdict, and incredibly, none of the three realised that Jessica wasn't a professional. She did very, very well. Who knows? Maybe one day soon you'll be seeing her on TV, and this time she'll be a real reporter, not pretending. It was a great experience, and I was pleased how I did. But actually, I wouldn't like to change jobs. I'm much happier working in the library. Five point eighteen. That was a great concert last night, Scarlett. Thanks. As we know, Scarlett's got a new CD coming out soon. So let's have a look at the best way we can promote it in France. Okay. Well, I think Scarlett should visit the major music stores. In my opinion, that's the best way to meet her fans. I'm not so sure. What do you think, Jacques? Actually, I don't agree with Mark. Scarlett isn't commercial in that way. Scarlett. Scarlett. I agree with Jacques. I don't have a commercial image. It isn't my style. Okay, but Scarlett needs more publicity. What about a series of TV and radio interviews? Don't you agree? Yes, but that's what everybody does. What we want is something different. Personally, I think Scarlett should tour clubs and summer festivals. 
She can DJ, play her favorite music, play the new CD, and meet her fans too. Yes, absolutely. That's a much better idea. Mark? Okay, why not? Scarlett? I think that's a great idea. Thank you, Jacques. 5.19. I think Scarlett should visit the major music stores. In my opinion, that's the best way to meet her fans. I'm not so sure. What do you think, Jacques? Actually, I don't agree with Mark. I agree with Jacques. Don't you agree? Personally, I think Scarlett should tour clubs and summer festivals. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a great idea. Five point twenty. It's great to be on our own again. Yeah. Is this the first time you've been to the Louvre? Uh huh. What's the matter? Is this about the meeting? Because I agreed with Jacques and not with you. Yeah. Well, we knew it wouldn't be easy. Working together, I mean. It's difficult for me as well, but if I don't agree with you, I know, I know, you're the boss. And I have to do my job. I really thought that Jacques's idea was better, and so did Scarlett. It's not a big deal, Ali. I'm fine, really. So, who exactly was the Mona Lisa? I'm not sure. I think she was the wife of a banker. Is that why she's smiling? Because her husband has a good salary. I also read somewhere that she was a self-portrait of Leonardo. A self-portrait? You're kidding. Now I don't know much about art, but Leonardo da Vinci was a man, right? Well, it's just a theory. Why do you think she's smiling? Well, in my opinion, she's the managing director of a music company. What? She lives in Paris. She's in love with her marketing director, and she has a lot of fun telling him what to do. That's really unfair. Hey, we're not in the office now. You can't tell me I'm wrong. Let's get a coffee. Good idea. Don't turn around. What is it? I've just seen Ben from the office. Where? I said don't look. I don't think he's seen us. Let's get out of here. Come on. Five point twenty-one. What's the matter? It's not a big deal. You're kidding. Now I don't know much about art. That's really unfair. Don't turn round. Let's get out of here. Five point twenty-two, one. Excuse me, is there a bookshop near here? Ah,、uh, sorry, I don't think so. Um, what are you looking for? I'm looking for a guidebook. Is there anywhere around here where I might be able to get one? Actually, there aren't very many bookshops in this town at all. I think there's one in the centre, but that's all. But you might be able to get a guidebook at a newsagent's. There's one on the corner on the right, and another one a bit further on this way. Oh right, thanks very much. Two. Where shall we have lunch? What do you think, Albert? You know the restaurants here. Well, you could go to Garibaldi's. The food's wonderful, home cooking. You need time though; they're a bit slow.、Mm, we're in a bit of a hurry because we're meeting Anna at two thirty. Hmm. Well, there's Trattoria Marco. They do good pasta, and Roberto's. Their fish is very good. 
I had pasta last night. Me too. Let's go to the fish place then. Where exactly is it? Is it sort of just down there? Three. There's nothing on TV tonight. Why don't you go and rent a DVD? Why don't you go? OK, but if I go, I choose the film. Uh, no way. I don't want to see another horror film in all my life. Well, you go then. We could both go and then get a takeaway for supper. OK, then. Four. Uh, come in, sit down. Thank you. Now, it's, um, James Baker, isn't it? Mm, that's right. Tell me a bit about the last hotel where you worked. You were head of reception, is that right? Yes, I was a receptionist for two years, and then I got promoted to head of reception. But you do realise that this hotel's much bigger than where you were before, and the post vacant here is for a receptionist. Yes, yes, I know. Why did you decide to get a job straight after school? I mean, why did you decide not to carry on with your education? To be honest, I wanted to earn some money, but I'd like to do a diploma in tourism next year, maybe studying part-time so that I can fit everything. Five. Have you applied for university next year? Yes. I've got a place at Manchester to do medicine. Medicine? You've always said you wanted to do biology. Yes, but I've changed my mind. I don't really want to work as a doctor, but I'd like to do medical research. And for that, the best thing is to study medicine. 5.23 So, what do you think? I think I like the Volvo best. It's so comfortable, and I love the colour. It's a really nice shade of blue. Don't think about the colour. That's a ridiculous reason for buying a car. The question is, is the Golf big enough? There's not much space for luggage. The boot's much smaller than the Volvos. Yes, but think about it. We only go on holiday once a year. The rest of the time, we only use the boot for shopping. And the Golf will be much easier to park. That's the advantage of a smaller car. You know parking's not your strong point. I can park perfectly, thank you very much. Come on, what about last week when you scratched the mirror? That wasn't parking. It was when I was driving in the high street. Anyway, Volvos are the safest cars on the road. Everybody says so. The Volvo's quite a bit more expensive, you know. If we bought it, we'd have to get a bank loan. How much more expensive is it? About 20% more. We wouldn't be able to go to France this summer. What about the Peugeot? Over there. It's cheaper than the Volvo and the Golf. And it's a really sweet yellow. Look, we've been here more than an hour, and I thought we'd agreed we were going to buy either the Volvo or the Golf. Yes. Now I'm not sure...